Alright, so today we're going to talk about a book called A Walk Through Dreams. Now, I think that for what it sets out to do, this book accomplishes it extremely well. Like, I think it does a very good job at that, but I'm not the biggest fan of everything that it was doing. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. The premise for this book is almost stupidly simple. It's alternate history, and it's about Okay, what if there was this special type of red yam, which grew in Australia, which I don't believe exists, and the natives, the aborigines, were able to find it, and through that they developed agriculture, and then they developed, like, large cities, and kingdoms, and empires, and such, and then later, when they contact the Europeans and the rest of the world, like, what happens then? And it, um, it kind of cuts off in like the mid uh, 17th century actually because it's part of a series but it this is basically just almost like a textbook run over of everything from prehistory to that point and while there are some points where it does get into prose and it has actual characters and stuff for the most part it is it is just that now i do believe that the aborigines had some agriculture like they weren't complete hunter gatherers but because of the way that the weather in Australia works, it's pretty much impossible to do uh, sedentary stuff without some form of irrigation. And the book does go into some detail about how that worked out and how they were able to get around it and how there's still large parts of the continent which are, you know, desert so they can't do much with them. But, you know, basically it is just an overview of how all that happened and how they wind up getting to basically Iron Age levels of technology by the time they make contact with the Dutch. and. Well, that's kind of it. You know, there, there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here, is the thing. Like, I myself am a fan of alternate history, and I'm kind of glad that some of it's becoming more mainstream nowadays. I just wish that most of the mainstream people had more than two fucking ideas, because it's always either, what if the Nazis won World War II, or what if the Confederates won the American Civil War? And then they're just bringing it up to the board of directors or whatever while jerking off under the table. Like, it, it, I just wish people were a little more uh, creative or imaginative with their ideas, their points of divergence, and this is a very good point of divergence. Now, I will say that there is a lot of technical talk in here about, like, how certain plants work and how they grow and stuff, which is, I'll be honest, it, it bored me to... F it bored me to tears. It was not good. It was terrible. And then same with when they talk about, like, diseases, because, you know, the Aborigines having uh, agriculture and stuff caused them to develop diseases, which then later infect the rest of the world, kind of the way that Europeans had smallpox, and then that hit the Australians and the uh, Americas really, really bad. And so it's, it's interesting to see that go both ways in this example, certainly. But, again, just the technical talk about the viruses and everything, like, not only did a lot of it go over my head, but it was just so bored. I, my eyes kept glazing over, and I was like, this needs to just end. I'm bored. Now, the thing about this book is that when you get to around two-thirds in, that's where the Dutch contact happens. And after that, the book takes a pretty big decline in quality. Because the thing is, up until that point, we had only had a few little brief interludes that were written as prose. Like, oh, here is this king talking to his advisors, and it'll be like a short little interlude, and uh, they're, they're not good. Like, they're, they're, just, they're just not, okay? Th this writer is skilled at writing just a timeline and how it works out, which is how a lot of alternate history is written, and I think that's a fine way of doing it, but he's just not good at prose, and because a lot of times it's talking about, like, wars and battles and stuff, especially near the end. There's, like, a really big battle, and that's one of the last things that happened. But I could not give, give a shit because these are people we were just introduced to. We have no reason to care about them. We have no connection to them. If this was, like, a regular book where we're following them all the way through, then sure, maybe we could have done that. Maybe we could have gotten away with it. But as it stands, absolutely just the most boring parts of the book. And the last third, after European Contact, is full of that stuff. Like, it is just so full of it, like, individual conversations, individual, well, not that many battles, really, but just, it's, it's really bad. And honestly, this book is pretty long as well, and had they cut out most of that, or at least simplified most of that, it would have been a more tolerable length, because as it is now, it's 
it is a little repetitive, like not too repetitive, but honestly there's just a lot of stuff in there I don't care that much about, and I would rather they have just, okay, let, you know what, let's go in there with a scalpel, this isn't really important, so we'll cut it. And I know that can be hard to do, but you gotta do it sometimes. And frankly, I would rather that this book have just stuck to one style so we're not going back and forth. Like, if it had just been prose the whole way through, even if it wasn't particularly good, I would have at least gotten used to it. And had it just been, like, technical jargon the whole way through, I would have been fine with that the whole way through. But as it is, it's, um, it, it just feels awkward going back and forth. And that's about all I have to say here. This really isn't a complicated work. Well, I mean, it is kind of complicated because you can go into all of the stuff in there that has changed and uh, how the author has very clearly researched this very well. And I think that's all super interesting. I am a fan of alternate history, but as I said, I don't like everything that this book was trying to do uh, completely, and I think it succeeds very well at what it sets out to do, but could have been better, could have been better. And uh, thanks to Gutza for uh, for recommending this, for requesting it, whatever you, whatever you want to tell me. But the point is, short review, not a lot to say goodbye. Alright, you know how this works by now. All the names on here are people that gave me money, and the people that gave me $10 and more are Apo Savalanian, Olivia Rayan, Ava Tumor, Brandon S. Pilcher, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Datboy805, Embis, Pfizer, Jeremy, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Kevin Jang, Liza Rudakova, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mel Austin, Microphone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Ve Victus. You guys are the best. If you want stuff like early access to my videos or just voting on future video topics, then consider sending me money. And if you don't want to do that, then become a YouTube channel member. Or just like this video, share it around and stuff. It really does help. And uh, that's uh, about everything I'm supposed to say here, so I'll see you later. Bye.